Hi guys, welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So a few videos back, I showed you this cool little whisper beacon that you can use to test your antennas or watch out for propagation changes. Now, a few comments on that video mentioned about building their own using an SI5351A module, which is a programmable clock generator. So I thought, well, let's try it ourselves. So this is a SI5351 development board. It costs just a few pounds on Amazon and is easily controlled from an MCU. I say microcontroller like an Arduino or an ESP32. Now it requires five volts DC to power it and it uses I squared C for short distance communication with a microcontroller. Now this one has three clock outputs and it uses a 25 megahertz crystal as a stable reference. There are some downsides to using one of these and the first is that it outputs a square wave so external filtering is an absolute must. A 25 megahertz crystal is used instead of a TCXO meaning a few hertz frequency drift can occur as the device heats up. Now I guess the reason a 25 megahertz crystal is used on these is simply because of cost. A crystal keeps things super cheap. Now that doesn't mean it won't work for our needs but it's something to bear in mind. For this project, I'll be using an ESP32 S3N16R8. And the reason I'm using this over an Arduino is because this has Wi-Fi built in. Whisper is one of those digital modes which is timed. There are specific time slots that Whisper transmissions are listed for, so we need to make sure that our transmission is on time. Using the Wi-Fi on this ESP32 module, we can connect to an internet time server and get the exact time. Of course, you could use a real-time clock if your device has one and then set it manually. Now, using this ESP32 with Wi-Fi also means I can generate a web server on board, which provides a configuration screen so you can view it from any network connected device, like a mobile phone or home computer. Now this particular ESP32 board also has a NeoPixel multicolor LED, which I will use to indicate when this project is transmitting. Of course, I could have also used one of these instead for getting an accurate time. And this is a GPS receiver that outputs NMEA over serial. The whole device would then have been GPS time synced. Now I did try that and it does work well, but for this demo, I'll just use the internet time sync for simplicity. There's only four wires needed between the ESP32 module and the SI5351 board. That's a ground, five volts, and then the I squared C connections. And these are labeled as SDA and SCL. The web server that I wrote for this project looks like this. And this comes directly from the ESP32 module itself. It will start with an ad hoc Wi-Fi connection and then once you have access to this page, you can connect it to your home network. The NTP time server is already set, but you will need to make adjustments to the call sign and your locator. I have also included a calibration entry against each band, as I found that even though the correct whisper frequencies were entered, the transmission was actually outside of that 200 Hertz whisper window on each band. Now I'll show you more on that later. There's also a switch to disable TX and also a switch to have it transmit on every slot or every other slot. It's also coded to vary the transmission frequency just by a few hertz on every slot. And this is just in case there's other stations that's on exactly the same frequency as your transmission. Now I have the system set to transmit on the 40 meter band at seven megahertz. And I want to show you what the transmitted signal looks like on a spectrum analyzer. As mentioned earlier, the SI5351 outputs a square wave. And well, just look at all these nasty harmonics. Now you definitely do not want to be connecting an antenna to this unless you have a filter. Now the filter board I chose to use was one of these from Soda Beams here in the UK. You can buy the PCB and then you can buy the filter kit for the bands you want to use. Now I purchased the 10 meter, 20 meter and 40 meter filter kits and you only have to wind the coils yourself and then solder them in place. 
Now this is good for around 25 to 30 watts, I believe, but of course we're not gonna use anywhere near that kind of power for our Whisper project. Now you may be wondering about automatic changing bands. Well, that can happen, especially if you're using a filter like this. The Soto Beams filter uses PCB headers to select the band that you wanna use, whereas this uses relays, which of course you could control from an ESP32 or an Arduino, but maybe that's for another project. So this is where we're up to now. We have the ESP32 microcontroller running our Whisper software. The SI5351 is connected to the filter, but before we move on to RF amplification, let's look at that output now that we've had the filter in place. And well, what a difference that is. With the filter in line, we can now see a really nice clean signal and legal that we can work with. Now as a test with just the power output from the SI5351, which is probably somewhere between five to 10 milliwatts on 40 meters, I saw this result with it running for about 30 minutes. I then switched to 20 meters and this was the result. Again, a lift only for around 30 minutes. Of course, band conditions were not that great and ideally you want to leave Whisper running for as long as possible to get better results. However, rather than rely on calculated output levels, I decided to try one of these. Now this is a two watt RF amplifier that according to the specs will work from one megahertz to 930 megahertz and it only needs around one milliwatt input to get a full two watts output. Of course, I do not want to run two watts on Whisper. That kind of defeats the object by transmitting that much power. After all, Whisper stands for Weak Signal Propagation Reporter. So after some tinkering around and trying various values of attenuators between the SI5351 and the amplifier, I ended up with 26 dB amount of attenuation. Now I also made this little board, which consists of a 100 ohm resistor and a 100 nanofarad capacitor. Now this provides a small amount of attenuation and it should prevent any DC from the SI5351 entering into the amplifier. This kind of cleans the signal up a bit. So now it was time to piece all the items together. The ESP32 is being powered over USB, simply plugged into my computer. This then controls the SI5351, which then outputs the whisper transmission to the RF amplifier through a 26 dB attenuator. And the amplifier is powered from a 12 volt DC supply, and I think it measured around 250 milliamp draw when it was running. The output of the amplifier, which measured around two to 300 milliwatt, then goes to the RF filter set to the correct band. Now the filter then goes off to my NFED half wave antenna, which is resonant on 40, 20 and the 10 meter band. Now while it was transmitting, I also had my radio on with JTDX running, just so I could decode my transmitted whisper transmissions. This also allowed me to see where the transmission was taking place. The green bar there on the waterfall of JTDX indicates the 200 Hertz portion of the 40 meter band where whisper transmissions should be placed. If you do try this yourself and your transmissions are outside of this area, then you can use the calibration settings for the selected band on that web interface. Now I think I used around plus 600 Hertz for the 40 meter band. But remember, if you use my code and you use this same hardware, yours might be different, so it's well worth checking. In fact, when I moved up to the 10 meter band, you can see that the transmission was way above where it needed to be. So entering a negative number in the calibration field for 10 meters brought that down so it was in range. Now it has to be in range in that 200 hertz slot because that's where all the listening stations are listening. If you transmit out of that, even if the station receives your signal, it's quite possible your whisper transmission won't be decoded. Now after letting 40 meters run for a little while, I then checked whisper website and I could see that my signal was being received from many more Whisper listening stations. So I think that's working. I then changed bands, this time 20 meter band, left it running for 30 minutes or so, and then observed this. Now this time reaching the east coast of the USA and all the way east deep into Russia. Now I'm pretty sure that if I left this running for many more hours, this map would have been populated a whole lot more. The device that I showed you a few videos ago had a built-in TCXO for frequency stability and it used GPS for timing. 
Now this project uses the internet for time, so timing is fine, but the stability of using a crystal could affect transmissions, which in turn will affect those listening stations decoding your whisper transmission correctly. Now with that said though, don't let that stop you from experimenting. For less than $20, you can get a Wi-Fi enabled, ESP32 module, and an SI5351. You could make your own band filters and then just use my code to run it. Now I will of course leave a link to my GitHub page where you can download it to test it for yourself, completely free of charge. Now it's possible in the future that I may change the crystal to a TCXO and use GPS for time sync instead of relying on an internet time server. I could even get rid of the web GUI and just have a display with buttons to control it. But let me know if you'd like to see me build any of those in future videos. Projects like this really are part of the ham community and it's quite fun to experiment with. You're mixing programming, software, microcontrollers with radio frequency. Essentially, practical learning with ham radio. And anyway, guys, let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Have you made something similar and how did you get on with it? Until next video, take care of yourselves and we'll see you in the next video.